lots of uh, f colleagues have pointed out that there are things that can be used to deliver content besides us giving lectures in class. And in particular, the internet is a great way of delivering lots of content to lots of people every day. So I experimented, along with others, with using the internet to deliver videos of my lecture content. I utilized a web template that was developed by the College of Natural Sciences to, to support my class. And so this web template, done in WordPress, was a very nice tool to make an attractive skin or a covering over a set of content that I wanted my students to have access to. I developed this in particular for my class, so I was able to rearrange the template for the title and, and subject of my class, and on the side, provide links to all the sorts of access that I wanted students to have, be it the syllabus, learning modules, the lecture tutorials, daily notes from the class, homework assignments, uh, information about the poster presentations students were going to do my class, and discussion boards, and so on. And so there's lots of information on this web template. It was really easy to do. It was about as easy to do as writing something in Microsoft Word is in order to write your own, yourself a term paper. So this was a great uh, resource, and, and the College of Natural Sciences was able to get this done for me. Then I started making of short videos of all my lectures. Literally, there would be a, several hundred such videos of 500, 5 to 10 minutes apiece for an entire lecture, semester of lectures. So if I think about a typical semester has 15 weeks in it, and maybe that's two classes per, per week, or about three hours per, per week, then that's about 45 hours worth of lecture. And I try to divide each of the hours into short segments. Again, if they're 5 to 10 minutes, then we're talking on the order of 6 to 10 lectures per hour. So it's 500 little video clips. When it becomes that many video clips, it's actually nice and modular, because instead of an entire lecture about Newton's second law, there's a, a lecture video about the derivation of it, or a lecture video about how to set up a problem, or like several lecture videos about uh, examples of how to use that to do that kind of problem. And I was in, in order to make it um, short and digestible like this, it became also modular enough that I could rearrange the videos as I needed to when I realized I should have done it a different way. Now the videos took lots of different forms, but I put them all up on a website, and they were not very fancy, but they were they got the job done. They would have the same content as I would have done in class, and I didn't have to rush, and I could take my time, and I could spell out all the steps that I might not have done in class. Some of the videos I tried to lay out really nicely. I used PowerPoint, and I animated the PowerPoint so that each step of a derivation could be very slowly revealed. So here I'm showing you the entire layout for a sample problem, but actually this sample problem would have taken me five or ten minutes to explain, and I would have revealed various parts of the diagram, and arrows and letters and labels and what have you, and then equations, step by step, using the animation features of PowerPoint. And in that way, I would feel like it was the same kind of unfolding of information with the same pacing as I would have had in a lecture class where it's me in front of a chalkboard. And I know that that's something students talk about a lot, because in a, in a chalk place class, the pacing is really, really important for them to be able to copy down information, ponder it, and think about it. So the layout was great, uh, and PowerPoint would allow me to re-record re the little video if I needed to. But other little videos that I made were completely handwritten. They were not fancy at all. I would just take a sheet of paper and a Sharpie pen or several pens and write it all out. In fact, I had a little cheap document camera that I had on my kitchen table, my laptop, and a piece of software called Camtasia, but there are others uh, called Captivate and other things that you can use to basically record me uh, writing out all this information. And here's a little you know, lecture slide on uh, an induced current from uh, Faraday's law, and I was explaining a particular example problem and trying to explain their so-called right-hand rule. The students didn't really care whether it was handwritten or played out. In fact, I think actually they probably prefer something that's handwritten because it has the immediacy of the instructor's intent for you to see that content. So, as I say, the con the quality of these things can vary significantly. You can handwrite it. You can you can do it in PowerPoint. In my case, you know, on the kitchen table, you'd hear my kids running around in the background arguing, or you'd hear the microwave go off, or the, the grandfather clock going on. It didn't really matter. The point was to make sure that the content was laid visually uh, in an attractive way, or you know, a clear way on the screen, and that the pacing was such 
that students could follow along and take notes because I really wanted these students to take notes. One of the things the students told me though is with the videos is they could pause and that was something that was really valuable to them beyond what was done in lecture because in a lecture I don't typically stop and students feel inhibited from raising their hand and asking for clarification. In the case of videos they could pause, think about it, maybe go talk to a friend and restart the video. Some have asked if you can really do all the same things in these videos that you can when you're doing your lectures. I do. I do every derivation I would have ever done in, the, in, the, in a lecture class. In fact, I feel like I get to do more. You can do all the derivations you please. Here's a complete derivation of uh, doing the, the Lorentz transformations. Where do they come from? And I would have had a previous video explaining what they are and what they're for, but then I would have done the derivation of where they come from using Einstein's postulates about constancy of C and then how you get to uh, uh, the, the particular formulas of the Lorentz transformations. So you never have to feel like the videos make you cut corners. In fact, for me, the experience has been that by doing things via video, I actually get to do more than I often feel like I can do in a rushed lecture class. I can do all the steps. I can make all the extra commentary I want to, and I can give more examples than I would typically be able to do in a lecture class because there's nothing constraining my time. I just go through it. I try to chunk it up into short bits. This particular video looks like it was, we're about five, hundred, five minutes and 50 seconds in, and there's another two minutes and 50 seconds to go, so maybe this is in total a, a nine-minute video, uh, but I just tried to make sure that it was digestible. About nine, ten minutes, that's about the most that someone can pay attention.